The way I was brought up is that the Bible is this orchestral whole, that all the pieces come together, that there's no contradictions, there's no clashes, right? Now, the funny thing about that is, you know, any, if you read it, of course, it's full of clashes and contradictions. And, and you know, you get these books, huge books that try to explain them all away, and they're very funny, because I had one once um, called the uh, Encyclopedia of Biblical Problems. It was absolutely huge, and it had all of the problems listed, and then it tried to explain them. And I thought to myself, this is terrible. I never knew there were that many in the first place. And the answers are terrible. You know, you shouldn't have told people that there were that many, you know. We'll think there's only one or two. But the problem for a lot of the, the church at that time was, yes, if it's, if it's got something to say, then it can't, it can't have contradictions. But think about it like this. If someone says they've, they've had a traumatic experience, say someone says they've been abused, and they're standing up in court, and they have a very linear testimony. You know, they know when everything happened and where it happened. That's not evidence that they're telling the truth. That's evidence that they're lying. Whereas if someone gets up in court and their testimony doesn't quite fit, you know, it, it, it clashes with what they said to the police, which clashes with what they said to their parents, that isn't evidence that they're lying, that's evidence that they're telling the truth. Because a traumatic event is an event that transforms you materially, but you can't integrate into your mind. It short circuits your mental uh, circuitry. Because it's, it's, like a, it's like looking at the sun and going blind. It's too much for you to take in. Right? And that's why you've got four Gospels. There was an early church leader who tried to make one Gospel, and it was condemned as a heresy, because he tried to amalgamate them all together. The idea is you've got four testimonies, and they do clash, and they don't fit. But that's not evidence that, they're, uh, that they somehow don't have something to say. That's evidence that they're testifying to some sort of traumatic event, a transformative event. And that's what I'm really interested in, is exploring what that event is, and more than that, of inviting people into uh, an experience of that event. And by the way, experience isn't even the right word. It's not like, it's not like you experience something, like I experience a person walking down the road, or I experience drinking a cup of coffee. A religious experience is not an experience. It's that which transforms how you experience everything, right? It's like birth. That's why, you know, Christianity talk about rebirth. You don't experience birth. I don't experience my birth. It's my birth that allows me to experience everything. I don't experience my life. It's my life that enables me to experience. So when you have this, this, this event takes place in your life, the way you see the world changes. You don't treat people the same way. You don't look at things in the same way. So in a sense, absolutely nothing has changed. And yet absolutely nothing remains the same. God get what God wants. Does God get what God wants? I don't know how to answer that. <laughs>